Hi, I'm Carmel Fisher and you're watching the Sequoia Spotlight. We're bringing you Q3 Seasons Roundup and with me I have Doug Croxell and Joel, the CFO uh, for Crown Electro and the ticker is CRKN. Doug, welcome. So good to have you with us. Wonderful. Uh, please give us a recap on what Crown Electro does and uh, you know, potentially touch on some of the highlights from this past uh, quarter. Yeah, sure. Um, Crown is the owner and uh, builder of a, a smart film solution we call Dynamic Tint. And that film can change from clear to dark in a matter of seconds. We take our film and we apply it to any glass surface. And the first product that we're launching uh, in late Q1, early Q2 of next year is what we call a smart window insert. And it's a, win it's a piece of glass with our film on it uh, and a window frame that matches the frame behind me, sits right into the window um, of an office building and it allows the occupant of the office or the building to control the shading of that glass. So if the sun's very bright in the Western sky and it's in the afternoon, and you want to be comfortable in your office, you can tint our smart window insert from clear to dark, prevent the sun from entering the office. The benefit for the building owner is that re we reduce the electricity used to power the HVAC system by approximately 26%, um, which makes the building more profitable and more importantly, puts less carbon out into the environment. Um, so again, it's a dynamic tint film that we apply to our smart window insert and we will start delivering that insert late Q1 next year, early Q2. Wonderful. Sounds like an extraordinary product. Um, do you foresee any challenges arising with this new variant on perhaps production or, you know, industry costs in general? Um, hard to say, uh, you know, um, you know, we have we have suppliers like everyone else who makes a product in the world. And so we're in constant communication with our supply chain. And, you know, we've, we've already factored into our own timing and projections, some disruption, how much disruption above that is really hard to say. But right now we're, we're kind of assuming that business is gonna continue as, as it has over the last six, nine months. Um, but, you know, if there's another variant that starts shutting down travel or starts closing offices again, Clearly, that could have an impact on us, but we don't see anything right now other than than the, the you know, kind of traditional delay that's happening across um, all industries. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's all kind of a, a wait and see game. Are there uh, what are the major strengths? Let's let's look at the positives of what you're currently doing. What are the major strengths you've noticed in recent quarters? Yeah, so our. Our technology is pretty unique because um, it's backed by a number of uh, issued patents and a number of trade secrets that we own. Um, and the nice thing about that is that nobody can make electrokinetic film, um, certainly not legally, um, without permission from us. So we're very unique in that regard. We're the only one who can do it um, in the world. Um, we think that our film has certain characteristics that set it um it set it, frankly, above the other dimmable glass technologies that are in the market. Those technologies have been in the market for some 20 years. Um, ours is, our technology is very inexpensive to manufacture. It's a film, not a complicated glass. Um, we can manufacture it on a roll-to-roll -roll machine. Um, our bill of materials is much less than the bill of materials for a traditional smart glass technology. And more importantly, we can power the transition of our film from clear to dark using the sun's energy or using a battery, which means we do not have to hardwire our film or our windows into the building's electrical system, into the electrical system of a home or into the battery of a car. So um, the sustainability nature of what we have, we think is in incredibly important in today's environment. And, um, you know, we're really taking, we're really riding the ESG wave that's, that's coming through uh, most, of, most of the industries that we're talking to. Wonderful. 
obviously it sounds like a product that should really be uh, expanding into global markets. Is there any plan for that in the near future? Yeah, uh, I don't know about the near future. We get, you know, we get calls and we're in discussions with a number of of REITs and most REITs own property, not just in the United States, but in other countries as well. And so we have, we definitely have opportunities to expand, not just globally within the commercial building sector, but also into other sectors like residential and automotive. And we will expand not just globally, but into other markets as well. I'm not sure exactly when that will occur. We're still trying to, um, still trying to serve the, the market that we've already talked about, which are retrofit, existing office buildings with our technology. Uh, I imagine that we'll start developing more concrete plans over the next calendar year about how we'll expand globally and how we will expand uh, within other markets within the United States as well. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you, Doug. I'm going to switch over to Joel now to get a bit uh, more insight on the financials reported of late. So. Thanks, Kamal. You're welcome. As Doug said, we're uh, we're on track to start shipping product uh, mid next year, and um, so we're pre revenue at the moment. So our net loss for the quarter end of September was five point seven million dollars. However, that included three point one million of non cash stock based compensation. Mm -hmm. On a year on year basis, that that net loss is is in line with the 2020 quarter and that was uh, made up of a, a 2.1 million dollar increase in non-cash stock-based compensation uh, a 1.4 million dollar increase in operating expenses as we've uh, ramped up our, our r d uh, and, uh, and and staffing to prepare for the shipping next year and those increases were were offset with a $3.6 million decrease in other expenses as we uh, converted all of our debt notes uh, at the end of the last fiscal. Net cash used for the quarter was $2.8 million, and this was uh, consistent with the first quarter of this year. Uh, as of September 30, our cash, cash equivalents were $9.7 million. And we have also recently agreed uh, terms with a financial institution for a $10 million standing letter of credit, which would you know, potentially provide Crown with access to, to financing for our operations and the, uh, the expansion of our production facilities over the next couple of years. Uh, the other big news that we announced in the earnings was that we are looking to shift our fiscal which has uh, been March 31st, and we're going to move that to a calendar December 31st, uh, fiscal effective this year. And uh, that's, that's the highlights. Excellent. Thank you for that recap. Um, what are the short-term growth plans? And perhaps Doug has touched on this, but maybe you can kind of coincide that with how you foresee that, you know, aligning with the financial growth as well. And at the moment, well, we've recently announced uh, a first customer and a second customer in uh, Hudson Pacific Properties. And these, these customers obviously have significant building portfolios, particularly Hudson, um, with uh, 120 buildings in their, uh, um, in the portfolio. So, you know, the, the growth is significant within a uh, a REIT, a customer, and uh, you know, we're we're having numerous conversations with the uh, other REITs at the, in parallel. So you know, we are at the moment just starting to build that backlog and uh, plan for the manufacturing capabilities in line with that. But it's it's incredibly exciting, Carmel. You know, there's uh, there's increasing pressures from consumers, from employees who sit in these buildings, and obviously from the regulatory environment as well. So uh, we're, you know, we're, we're hitting this market at a, uh, at a, at a time where this, uh, this type of carbon reduction technology is, uh, is in high demand. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing what happens in 2022. 100%. Um... Can, 
can you tell me whether or not you know your top investors by name? Yes. Well, I, I didn't hear the question. Do we know our top investors by name? <laughs> do, yes, of course. Yes. Wonderful. Of course you do, because you're us using the Sequoia platform, and that helps with transparency. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, um, Doug, we'll move back to you just to give us some final highlights um, and takeaways that you want our audience to remember this this interview for. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you know, Crown's at a, it's kind of a cliche, but we're really on the one, one yard line right now. I mean, it's taken a long time to march down the field. Um, mm -hmm. The next couple of quarters of this company's life are so pivotal. Um, we're finally at the point where we've taken our technology and we've commercialized it. Uh, we're starting production. We're ramping up our sales efforts. We're converting prospects into customers. Um, it's an exciting time to be a part of Crown, and it's an exciting time to be an investor in Crown. And uh, really look forward to having additional calls like this, where we can report on additional customer wins, uh, ramping up production and product delivery. So you know, the next two three quarters of this company's life are going to be pivotal and very exciting. I did not doubt that for a second. And this is why Sequoia does partner with Crown already, um, because we believe in that growth. So we look forward to shedding more light on, on the company. Thank you, Carmel.